Hey, we are back in the studio here at Davis Beanie Access. I'm Autumn Labbe Renault. Thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to be talking about a nonprofit in Yolo County that fills some critical gaps in our, our safety net and how we take care of each other. And that's Meals on Wheels, Yolo County. And I'm really pleased to have today as my guest, their executive director, Christy Skibbins. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for inviting me. So you and I have known each other for a while before the organization was called Meals on Wheels, Yolo County, because it's been through a few name it changes has. in its in its uh, since its inception in 1975. Yes. So tell us where you're located and then let's talk about those those critical services yeah, I mentioned. You might know us as People Resources Inc or um, Elderly Nutrition Program but we are Meals on Wheels Yolo County and uh, we serve all of Yolo County. We are located our kitchen and our main administrative office is located in Woodland. Uh, we serve uh, Woodland, Davis, West Sacramento and Winters at all of their senior center sites so folks can come there to eat lunch and the same lunch is served to uh, home delivered clients also all over. Uh, we have about 27 routes all over. We're looking to start more and, um, and we serve uh, almost 400 meals every weekday. I have first-hand experience of, of the program. When my mom was first diagnosed with dementia and was still living on, a, a, on her own, we put different support structures in place. And one of those was Meals on Wheels. And we had lovely people who came to the door and it, it was, first they brought her a meal and so she had something to eat when I couldn't provide something for her and that was nice. But they also said hello and it was a little safety check. They saw that she yes. answered the door. So it's, it's really a, a, a profound way of outreach to It's very seniors. important. Uh, there are uh, over 5,000 Meals on Wheels organizations just in this country alone, even though it's an international program. And, um, and most of them these days actually deliver five frozen meals to last for the week, and then they can microwave them. Um, but we are lucky that we are um, kind of small enough, big enough, that, uh, that we still prepare all of our own food at our kitchen in Woodland starting at 4 a.m. every weekday. We deliver it hot and ready to eat. And um, that is a critical component because it allows that volunteer who's delivering that meal to do kind of a three-pronged thing, deliver the food, which is absolutely needed, to do that safety check or that wellness check-in yeah. to see how they're going, are they slurring their words or, or something like that that needs to be, you know, put up the, up the chain. Uh, or And also just to have a little chat. Gosh, it's a great day today. Isn't the weather right. nice? Or you said your daughter was coming to visit you. How did that go? Or those kinds of things. Because a lot of these folks are so isolated and really they're with the TV all day long. Yeah, it's human yeah. contact. It is, yeah. So how many seniors are you serving in Yolo County currently? Mm -hmm. Well, it's hard to put exact number on it because it changes all the time. Imagine. The elderly, um, their health and those kinds of things change all the time. Last year, we served 85,000 meals in this in this county. We served um, about 24,000 just right here in Davis. So, um, but uh, every day we we serve about 400 meals, and two thirds of those are home delivered meals. We actually go to the person's home hand it in through the door or actually go inside and give it to them. Um, and the other third are at those four congregate sites. Now you would think this work you do is completely non-controversial and, and, <laughs> and really it is. And yet politicians have taken aim at Meals on Wheels. They have. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sometimes to our detriment, and other times, funnily enough, right. <laughs> to um, to great um, to great income <laughs> right. streams. Um, uh, shortly after our current president was elected, his uh, at that time um, his uh, chief of uh, finance, uh, Mick Volvaney, went on national television and delivered the soundbite that, well, we have to cut programs like Meals on Wheels because it's obvious they just don't work. Well, that was awesome because we got so many donations because people know that Meals on Wheels works. And right. it was invented in, in England in World War II. It's going all over the world. Um, and it really does work. There's not another program like that. And um, we don't get a lot of funding. Uh, right now, we're um, kind of waiting because Congress has just come back. And the House has already passed an increase in funding for us for the next four years. And also re um, 
recertified the Older Americans Act, which provides for that funding. Of course, now it needs to go to the Senate. Yeah. Uh, they're a little busy with some other things right now, <laughs> so we're few. not sure um, <laughs> you know, when that's going to happen. Uh, we're okay till November 21st, which is um, they've put that in place so that there's no shutdown of the government. So. I think of Meals on Wheels as a very successful social service agency in that you have a clearly identified need and you work very hard to, to fill it. And I, I'm aware that, um, I was reading on your website, you have something like 27 different routes you do, and then you have four. Tell us about the congregant gathering spaces. Yeah, so um, we, uh, we really encourage the people that can still either drive or get a ride with somebody. Uh, in Woodland, we have the community care car. Uh, in Davis, we have people actually biking to get meals to the yeah. Davis Senior Center, which is awesome. Um, and so um, because all those different locations have other things for the seniors to do, they're all very different. We right. have pool tables. We have computer banks that they can get on the computer and use them for the ones that are computer literate. And um, we have bingo, and there's knitting, and there even little winters, um, you know, they have their bingo, they have their knitting on Mondays yeah. and all those things. And just eating socially, sitting down with other people to enjoy a meal is a lot more than most seniors can enjoy. So it's very important that they do that as long as they can. It, it helps keeps the dendrites well, yeah, connected. Isolation so. has profound yes, effects, it too. Does. I, yeah. I really saw that with my mom. Yeah. So. And they're saying it actually has physical effects now. There's more studies about that, yeah. that it actually manifests itself physically. Yeah. yeah. So you did a great interview on Davisville on Cater with Bill oh, Buchanan a few weeks ago in which you uh, talked at length about the silver tsunami. Mm -hmm. So let, let's bring that forward into this interview so people get sure. just a taste of what we're talking about. That term, what does that term mean? Sure. The silver tsunami, it's kind of just a nickname for um, uh, a metaphor, if you will, for um, all of those baby boomers that were born between 1946 and 1964. And I was talking to somebody the other day and we were reminiscing about how when we were in school in the 60s that they couldn't build elementary schools schools fast enough, you right, know, to right. keep up with that this was that huge end of the boom. bubble. Yeah. Now, fast forward all this time, and yeah. here we are, and all those baby boomers are now, you know, becoming seniors, and um, so we still have that huge bubble, that huge demographic that we have to take care of. And also, you have to remember that as people turn 60 years old, which is the minimum age to receive our services, if they have not had, you know, good health care over the years, uh, they've had a tough life, they're not really 60 years old um, right. in their health. They're more right. like maybe an 85 year old for everybody else, you know. Yeah. So they have a lot of dental problems and diabetes and a lot of problems like that that um, that they need this service like when they turn 60. You know, right. So. And you shared an amazing statistic about how many people are turning. Yeah. 60. 60. Uh, right now, there are between 10 and 12,000 people in America turning 60 every day. Every day. Every day. And um, so now that doesn't mean they all need Meals on Wheels or other senior services sure. also, but um, it means that that's how many there are. And that's going to happen for the next five or six years until this bubble is over. And, um, and so what they're really worried about is as all these people get older and even people that aren't you know, really um, needing all the services when they're 60. Mm -hmm. When they start hitting 85, that's oh, sure. like the magical number where all of us start having some sort of health problems yeah. and, and may need meals or other tons of other services that, that are needed by seniors. So it's, it's a huge... It's a huge challenge. Yeah. yeah. So every nonprofit, and I speak from experience, every mm -hmm. nonprofit, you know, struggles to, to meet the mission and to do so with limited resources. So we've talked a little bit about Meals on Wheels challenges in and, and that regard. Um, what, what do you see changing over the next, in, with all those new people coming into the system, what do you see changing over the next five to 10 years mm -hmm. and how will that directly impact your organization? Right. Well, what's happened really in the last 15 to 20 years, uh, most nonprofits get a lot less government funding than mm -hmm. they used to, you right. know that yourself. So, um, so as that government funding has gone down and the number of seniors has risen with the baby boomers and, and, and so on, then um, the need is there. We have a waiting list now, we're serving 400 a day, but we have a waiting list of 61 people waiting for meals. We have 15 of those are right here in Davis, and uh, that's really important. We try to get them on the on the routes, and we are expanding 
the routes as we have more volunteers available, but it's right in the middle of the day. Sometimes that's hard for people's schedules. So we foresee this challenge, you know, you know, continuing over the next probably 20 years or so. So is that yeah. the big limiting factor is having enough volunteers having to deliver? Having enough volunteers and having enough uh, money uh, for food and staff and space in order to provide those meals. We're, we're a little squeezed in our kitchen where we are right now, but right. it's it's okay. And uh, But um, because we don't have enough funding, we could hire more people for the kitchen or yeah. we could get some more storage space or something or even hire some people to deliver some meals. Um, but that means more money. So sure. it's either volunteers or money or sometimes it's both. So are you in every community in Yolo County? We are not in Clarksburg and we're not in... Um, Dunnigan. And the reason why is we don't, there's two reasons. One is um, we have to keep the temperature of the food within a certain window uh, because of our health department regulations. Yeah, sure. And um, so sometimes it's challenging to go to opposite corners of the county like that. Um, the other thing is, is that we don't have a consistent number of clients in those areas. We'll get two people out in Clarksburg and they'll call and want services and then, but they're only on for maybe a, a year and a half or something like that. We don't have enough to really start a program there. And also because we get some government funding there are of course different regulations for each government entity that says okay you can't do this you can't do that mm -hmm. so um, sometimes that involves um, the length the, f the length of the, the route that you go on and those kinds of things and so that sometimes precludes us but everywhere else we do we, ha we even go out to Esparto Knights Landing YOLO and I think you said you recently added a, a route out in Winters. Well, we need to. Uh, oh, okay. Winters. So that's uh, for, one of your... For 44 area. years, the whole time we've been serving Winters, you know, we've just had one route out there. And um, whereas in other places we have seven or eight or nine routes. And, uh, but um, we have enough clients now that we need to start a new route, but we don't have enough volunteers in Winters. So we really need that out there. So, so let's, uh, let's talk about how people can support you and how they sure. can get involved. So okay. um, I know Diana is going to put the website up on, on the uh, screen so people mm -hmm. will see that. And um, I've, I spent some time with your website this morning. There's lots of information there. Mm -hmm. But if people want to get, um, if they want to volunteer, does that, uh, mm -hmm. how do they do that? And do they need to be trained? What does that involve? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, we designed our website a few years ago, so it would really hit three audiences, those who are looking for meals or their family members and right. information about that, and those who are looking to volunteer, and then those who are looking to donate to, to the cause. So it's uh, if you're any of those three audiences or more than one, it will all Good. be there for you. So so volunteering, you just go to mowyolo.org and click on volunteers. There's all the information is right there. You can immediately um, email volunteer at mowyolo.org and that will go directly to our deputy director who's in charge of the volunteer program. And, um, and he uh, goes out to the various communities. You never even have to leave your own community. Mm -hmm. And um, it's about an hour um, of um, volunteer training. Uh, you do have to, we have to have a copy of your driver's license and your insurance because you'll be using your own car sure. if you're delivering meals and um, we put you on a route with somebody else who's experienced and you can do that for as long as until you feel comfortable and then you can take a route by yourself a lot of married couples do it they do it to spend time together and because it's often good to have a driver and a runner somebody that hops out of the car gets the meals and goes up to the front door while the driver's turning around the car and getting ready for the next place right. um, so that's good some people like to volunteer in the kitchen Kitchen. Um, in uh, Davis, uh, we have a lot of uh, kitchen volunteers, which is awesome, and they um, come and help pack the food, both for home delivery or they serve the food to the folks that come there to the Davis Senior Center. Okay. Yeah. Well, our time is up. Okay. So I want to thank you for coming in and uh, and speaking with us. And I just I just want to say again, having had firsthand experience with my own mother and the program, it's a really it, it's really a, a life saving thing. It's the kind of thing that can turn a day around for uh, a frail elderly person who's a little bit isolated in their home, can't really get out anymore. So we've been talking with Christy Skibbins of Meals on Wheels, Yolo County, and you can find out more at their website, and you can find more programs like this online at dctv.davismedia.org, and we thank you for tuning in.